morning. Welcome to St. Andrews. Welcome online. Uh, boy, the bus is really running late today. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> so, how many times have we all said, I'm fine when we're not? We may be able to fool our friends and family, but we can't fool God. He knows all of our sins, all of our failures, but still loves us unconditionally. <laughs> Supposed to have it all together. And when they ask how you're doing, just smile and tell them it's never better. Line number two, everybody's life is perfect except yours. So keep your messes and your wounds and your secrets safe with you behind closed doors. is such a great day. It may be chilly outside, cold outside, but it is warm in here with the warmth of God's love. I feel his presence in here. So we just want to welcome everyone. Definitely welcome those who are watching us virtually and welcome to those who are here. Are we ready for this kingdom explosion today? I don't know about you, but I am. I feel it. I'm That's energized, right? right? That's right. That's right. It's like we have a big wedding going on, one side, one side, and nobody in the middle. <laughs> it's like, the bus kind of showed up, but 
Um, anyway, we are grateful and thankful for every member of this community, both those worshiping virtually and those here today, whether you're a friend, family, or a visitor, welcome to worship. We are doing Kingdom Explosion. Today we're going to look at the impact Jesus has on your life. So in this world in which we are dealing with injustices of all kind, we are dealing with destruction, we are dealing with inequities, how does Jesus impact you? When we're dealing with illnesses and death and grieving and loss, how does Jesus impact you? That's what we're going to look at today as we continue this entire series. So let the Holy Spirit descend upon this place and those worshiping virtually. No matter what's going on in your lives, may you put that aside for a moment and may you experience God in new ways. May love and healing show up for you and may, may we worship in ways that help you connect to God. So let us worship. Amen. Micah Tyler, who wrote this next song, was going through a very rough patch with some very serious things going wrong. And a after asking God repeatedly to change the things that were going wrong for him, he realized that maybe he should be asking God to change him so that he can rely more on God to get him through this rough time. Maybe being different can be a good thing. <coughs> just want to be different, different. All right, at this time, we are going to pass the peace. First, we want to pass the peace to those who are watching us virtually. Good morning. Peace be with you. Peace be with peace you. Peace be with you, Pastor Dave. Thank you. 
Alrighty, um, I lost my piece of paper. All right, like the bus showed up and we had to talk to people. All right, good to see everyone. For those I didn't say hi to, hello. I'm glad you're here. All right, so Life at the Church Celebration Ministries, right after a service for those that want to join, we are going to do an initial new member meeting um, and talk about that process. So we'll meet in my office. If there's too many of us, we'll find some other place to go and hang out. Uh, but we'll meet right after service today. Um, Life of the Church, I think that's... Oh, no, that's... The province got changed into this week. But I sent an email out for that. So we can talk. Anybody who wants to go to the province, you can talk to me afterwards. So, Celebration of Ministries. Something happened here yesterday that was incredible. Um, not only were we a work site for a mission um, group. So, Yarley United Methodist Church runs a youth mission um, trip. I don't even know what to call it. People come to them. They stay over, and uh, during the summer, they're there for a week. About two years ago, we had them here for the summer for a week. Then they do a winter one. They haven't done it for a couple years. They did it this year. We were a site. We may have been the only site, but we were a site, and so not only did they show up, Pam and a group of other people from our church showed up um, to get everything organized downstairs for the clothing initiative, um, and it took... How many, people, how many people were here? 15 total? 20? A lot? Yeah. So however many people were here, some of you are here in, right now, you were here. Um, thank you for that. I was unable to be there because of another commitment, uh, but we are getting closer to getting that clothing initiative up and running. So give yourselves a round of applause and for Pam's leadership in that. It's a team effort, yeah. Yeah, but every, I mean, a lot of people were here, so thank you. So that right there shows what this church is about and how we're going to get out into the community um, and be able to um, meet the needs of those that um, have clothing uh, challenges. So thank you for that. All right, let's do a recognition of Martin Luther King Day. Come on up here, Pastor Faye. So everyone knows tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, so what we want to do is kind of a recognition using this litany. At the end of the litany, we'll do a quick little um, prayer um, for this, but pull that out, and you can follow along. 
can I start? Yeah. All right. Miriam hid a baby in the bull rushes, disobeying in Pharaoh's edit to kill the male children of the Hebrew slaves. The child grew to adulthood. Called by God, he liberated his people from Pharaoh's bondage, and Miriam sang a freedom song. Jonah, called by God to preach repentance to his enemies in Niv Niv Nivana, Niv Niv someplace. <laughs> you got it. Jonah resisted going to this place that I can't pronounce. He fled from this place I can't announce in a storm-tossed ship. Rescued from the depths of the sea, he returned to the enemy city, preached and witnessed to the Nivites' salvation when they turned to God. Mary, the mother of Jesus, accepted her call from God with rejoicing, saying, God has filled the hungry with good food and sent the rich away empty. Paul, the apostle, journeyed over the known world, founding Christian communities. Called by God, he preached reconciliation to Jew and Gentile, creating controversy among his colleagues as he pursued God's purpose of peace among estranged people. Women marched together, carrying in banners and demanding peace and justice. They sought peace among men and women and peace based on justice between races. Called by God, they struggled 70 years to win the right to vote in the United States so that their granddaughters could take up the work they had begun. Black and white marched together in Alabama, Mississippi, Chicago, and Washington, D.C. Called by God to turn the nation around. Martin Luther King was our drum major keeping rhythm as we walked toward a new day when liberty and justice would be shared in peace by all. The march continues as we raise our voices with all who are oppressed, violated, and rendered invisible because of gender, identity, sexual orientation, race, age, ability, or economic status. We are called to join with all creation, crying out for a just peace. Christ, our peace, we hear your call. We experience your ministry through the lives of peacemakers and justice seekers. And guide us as we follow the path of shalom. We thank you for the cloud of witnesses who have known your presence in their struggles every step of the way to peace. Your promise is sure that peace is possible when we follow in your way, in the way you lead. Amen. Amen. All right. So I just want to do a quick little prayer, too. Um, for those that are familiar with the civil rights movement, um, Martin Luther King Jr. happened to be an incredible face to the movement, but guess who was behind him? So Martin Luther King Jr. was like the face of the movement. I mean, he was in front. Who was behind him? Well, God, definitely. Who else? Yeah, it was women. There were more black women that were part of the fight for civil rights than there were black men. But we don't read about them. We tend to read about the black men because society, still to this day, but definitely back in that time, had much more of a chauvinistic, misogynistic way of being. But if it wasn't for the black women and what they did, including those that were slaves that educated people and went and got educated even though they could have been killed, the civil rights movement would not have occurred. So on tomorrow, whatever's going on, whether you have off, whether you don't, whether this is a day you don't pay attention to, whether it is, Take a moment and reflect. More people helped Martin Luther King do what he did. And if it wasn't for them, he couldn't have done that. And so pay attention to the ones behind him that we don't read about often. So let's pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for understanding that when you called Moses, Moses said, I needed help. Aaron was there. And so, God, we give you thanks and praise for Martin Luther King Jr., who chose to fight the good fight, who chose to stand in the spotlight and preach justice. But, oh God, we also remember on this day those that were behind him, those that weren't seen, those that were behind the scenes, those that also championed the fight for justice, the fight for justice to say, I am tired and I will not sit in the back of the bus, the fight for justice for those that showed up and said, I'm going to sit at this counter. And so, oh God, we give you thanks and praise for people who choose to follow your justice. And oh God, today in 2024, as we watch violence unfold, as we watch wars rage, help to change people's hearts so that justice can be the way instead of hate. 
It is in your loving name of Jesus the Christ in which we know you want us to live in justice. We cry out to you and pray to you for justice. Amen. 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 And on that note, we are going to turn to our joys and concerns. What joys do you have today? What joys? Hannah's able to smile a little better because she no longer has her braces. Oh, Yay. that's great. <laughs> Good job. I'm going to joy for every single person that showed up yesterday also. Yes. My joy is that my husband's company was able to fly us both out to Arizona last Sunday so that I could see my husband receive a, um, an award for the... Um, MVP of the Northeast District of his company. Oh, well, that's cool. Congratulations. Yes. And we got to stay at the Biltmore. That's great. Awesome. That's great. Awesome. Congratulations. Do we have any other joys? Um, just a joy. Jen and I will be celebrating our one year anniversary next weekend. So oh, just, awesome. Yes. Congratulations. I have a joy just for the support from this church with all that we've been going through. Um, there's just been an outpouring of love from you guys, and I really appreciate that. And we've had wonderful friends that have stepped up and really helped us with everything that we need to do, as well as great family. So we want to say thank you. Amen. Any other joys? At Christmas time. My sister gave me a whole lot of pill bottles, uh, and I got to uh, finish half the undoing of the labels so that they could be sent to uh, other countries uh, that need pill bottles, but not their labels. I still have a second one, and I finished it up last week when I was not here. So that's what I was doing. <laughs> That's awesome. That's oh, awesome. Oh, thank you, Polly. <laughs> Hi, uh, just a quick update uh, for my wife with her cancer treatment. As you know, she had her surgery in, in uh, November, and it's been uh, up in the air whether she had to have chemo and radiation. It uh, turns out it's just radiation, but it's every day for a full month that starts Tuesday. So no chemo. That's great. Ken and I are getting excited about uh, our cruise. We leave on Thursday for an 11-day cruise to the Caribbean. So we'll miss you the next two Sundays, but we'll be nice and warm. We'll bring it back. We'll bring the warm weather back. All right. <laughs> oh, that's great. We're going to miss you, though, and Ken. <laughs> so any other joys? No, just joys that people are online, but I don't see any joys specifically. Okay. Concerns. Do we have any concerns? So last week was a rough week in the DeLuca house. Um, Vince and I went down to Penn. The doctor tweaked some medicines. She's not real sure. We're going to give it a shot. Um, but on the joy side of that, at least I missed that deluge of rain. <laughs> um, Jess went to the doctor for her vertigo. Her hearing is fine. They can't figure that out, so they're giving her exercises to do. Um, and then prayers for my family, for my aunt and my cousin. My Uncle Jim went to heaven last week. Uh -huh. So he's in a better place, and he's with my mom. Uh -huh. right. so talk to Colleen about vertigo. She knows all the exercises. Oh, good, good, good. Um, our best friend, he had a stroke last uh -huh. week. Um, he's doing better, but he's got daily speech therapy, and he has to see OT and cardiology. Um, luckily, it was only a small one because it's in the brainstem and it could have been catastrophic. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had my MRI and I have a lot of issues with my neck, so now I have to follow up with that. Okay. Um, I'll talk over here. Uh, so, um, Last week, uh, my best friend's husband had a massive heart attack um, and ended up passing on Thursday. Um, so just prayers for her. She has three kids. Um, it's just tough. 
Um, he, a joy in it, he was um, able to give a lot of organs um, to save other lives. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, continue prayers for Joy and Richard Weaver. Uh, joy had fallen and broken her shoulder, shoulder, and um, it needs going to have a long time to recover. So prayers for both of them. Continue. I just want to pray for the Swindell family. Um, they are they live in the parsonage of St. Paul's, and they're just having they may have some housing issues. So I'm going to want to pray for them, and also for Jen's mom who's getting a PET scan this week for her cancer. So let's pray that the scans go well. You want to go, Gary? Uh, no, we need the other mic. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, just continued prayers for um, my mom. Um, she, she's somewhat stable. They're trying to figure out uh, why she spiked a fever overnight a couple nights ago. Um, but she seems stable now again. Uh, it's been a, a rough week and a very, very rough uh, 12 months for our family, but especially my, my mom with the passing of, of our dad in August and everything going on now. Just you know, continued prayers, please. Yeah, just an announcement here. Um, there's a pair of earrings up here. If some, somebody lost some earrings, they're right here. They're not Dave's. All right, check with him. <laughs> I have a joy and a concern in that my, our grandson got his driver's license yesterday, um, uh -huh. which was very cute. He, the, our daughter couldn't tell us. We had to wait until he came and pulled up out front of our house and sent us a text to look out the window, which was very cute. But prayers that... God takes the wheel and, and watches over him as he learns how to navigate this new journey that he's on. Well, even if God takes the wheel, let's have his hands on the wheel regardless. <laughs> let's, let him While God's praying for that, I have two grandsons that just turned 16. Keep the prayers coming for young drivers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so on Facebook, here's what we have. We have, okay, so from Kristen, prayers needed for my dad, Dave, who has COVID. They usually come to this service. They've come to second service sometimes. Um, and I think Dave may have some breathing issues. So definitely prayers for um, Dave. Um, and then Kristen's daughter, Carly, is having abdominal pains. And they have a family friend, Joan, who's in the hospital. We have Tammy asking for prayers for friends. The Gilding family, they lost their 30 year old daughter, Paige, to cancer this week. Joan, uh, Joni um, is prayers for Mark as his Parkinson's disease is progressing and making him more wheelchair bound. So we pray for you, Mark, um, for that struggle that you're going through. And then uh, Karen, Prayers for Jacob and um, her husband, Paul, for a safe trip as they're driving back from Florida at this moment. So they're the ones on Facebook. Uh, I forgot uh, two more joys. Uh -huh. uh, my friend, Irwin, uh, got a clean bill of health, and my sister got her cochlear implant uh, activated, and now she can hear all the noise around her. <laughs> so now she can hear you. Oh, <laughs> uh, amen. Any other concerns? Okay, well, we're going to go to the throne of grace, who is our resource for all things. Dear Heavenly Father, you are so amazing. You are breathtaking, earth shattering. You are the great I am. We give you thanks, God. We give you thanks every day just for being who you are. We thank you, God, for being in our lives. And right now, God, we just want to lift up the concerns. You have heard the cries of your people, God. Cries for healing, cries for understanding, cries for comfort, God. Heal, reconcile, comfort, God. Those who need you, you know all about it. Those whose basic needs are unmet, God. Because you said in your word that you will provide 
all that we need according to your riches and glory. So we give your word back to you, God. You said by your stripes we are healed. So we give your words back to you, God, because we know that you are faithful, that you are trusting God. So we put all praises and all faith and all confidence in you that you will answer the cries of the people. Yeah, so God, and in that confidence that we know you are a God of provisions, and yet, oh God, as you are children, we often want what we want, and yet that is not always what we need. So in these moments in which our lives seem to be falling apart, in which things are happening that are just causing our hearts to have sadness, in those areas in which we need hope, in those areas in which we need healing, oh God, help us to say yes to what you have for us and no to what we want. For, oh God, we know that when we connect with you in new ways, in ways in which we follow you, amazing things happen. Things occur in ways that could not happen without you. And so, oh God, we give you thanks for all things are possible with you. We pray for this church and where you want this church to go, for we know when we get out of the way and let you lead, amazing things happen, and we're about to embark on a new clothing initiative. And so, God, let abundance flow, but let it flow through the blessings you have. And may each of us rest in gratitude with those blessings. And so today, let us share the same words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And deliver us from temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Why do we turn in sickness and sorrow, or who do we turn to in sickness and sorrow when our hearts are breaking in grief and pain? Who do we lean on when troubles come? When we need a shoulder or a friend to turn to, who do we turn to for guidance and direction in our lives? Who is the answer? Jesus. Jesus is the answer. You are my hope 
may be seated. Go on up. You got this. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you as our God, nor have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. And too often we wander from your path by trying to do things our way instead of yours. Forgive us, Lord, your servants repent. Merciful God, we confess that we are too often complacent in answering your call to enact justice. You call us to enter the flow of your justice that rolls down like water, and instead we inhibit the work of justice by choosing not to pay attention or believe the stories of suffering and need in our midst. Forgive us, Lord, your servants repent. Most of God, we confess that sometimes we have heard you. We don't want to hear your voice. We don't want to receive your call. We are scared of what you may ask us to do, how letting your grace work in our lives might change us. So we keep you at arm's length, ready to run when you seem to ask too much of us. Forgive us, Lord, your servants repent. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. Amen. Thank you. I should follow that act. Uh, uh, the narrative of Mary and of Martha, two sisters demonstrate two important elements concerning relationships, generosity and love. Martha is busy preparing the house for guests. During those days, people showed great hospitality via making the house comfortable. Mary decides to extend love to Jesus by being in his presence and listening to him. Although many would criticize Mary, Jesus looks at her actions in a favorable manner. Martha's service isn't minimized by Jesus, but her worries show that her service needs to be grounded in Mary's kind of love for him. Question to consider, are our actions and behaviors grounded in our love for God, or are we doing too much? As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. The word of the Lord for all people. Thanks be to God. Julie's message and then you started? Okay. All right, I need the little ones. Hi, good morning. If you want to, you can sit down or you can stand, whatever is more comfortable for you. Oh, it's always great to see these little ones. How are you? You didn't want to come up here today? Oh, wow. And usually you're the one who says something. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay. 
have a question for you. Do you guys have friends, like in school or in your neighborhood? Yes, you do? All right. You've got friends, little one? All right, that's awesome. What makes this person or persons your friend? Why do you think they're your friends? What makes them your friend? Because they're kind. Oh, excellent. You don't know why someone's your friend? Are they nice to you? Do they share? Yeah. All right. Anyone else want to respond? Do they play with you? Hey, she says they play with her. That's what makes them her friends. Very good. Well, this morning's message that I'm going to give is about friendship, which really is about relationships how we get along with one another, how we connect with people, how we behave and treat other people, right? If we have friends, how are we supposed to act if we're a friend? Kind. Kind. Be, huh? Sharing. Sharing. What else? They care for you. All right, we care about people. Playing with them at recess. Playing with them at recess. Huh? <laughs> okay, that's what it. What do you do with your friends? <laughs> oh, awesome, awesome. You guys are so great. This is one of my favorite parts of the service, just connecting with little ones, right? Because I was a teacher for a very long time, 39 years. So now I'm out of that, <laughs> but I still enjoy the little people. All right, let us pray at this time, okay? And you're going to repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for helping us love others too. Thank you for being our friend. And thank you for letting us or enabling us to be friends. In the name of Jesus, amen. Oh, you guys did a great job. Great job. Give them a hand. <laughs> I see you, princess. I see you, princess. I know. <laughs> All right, so connecting um, with God in reflection, we're going to do something a little bit new um, that we haven't done uh, before. So um, we're just going to spend some time in silence. I know that's difficult, uh, but here's what I want you to think about is what's going on in your life right now where this cross could be meaningful, where this light that never ends can be meaningful, where that plate, the bread, and the juice can be meaningful. Just take a moment, 30 seconds, maybe 60 seconds. I know it'll be difficult, but just sit in silence. And where is God working with you? So don't look at bulletins. Don't look at anything. Just sit in silence and see where is God trying to connect with you. God, that was about 30 seconds. So we give you thanks and praise for the way you connected with each person here and those worshiping virtually. May that connection grow deeper and may it prepare them 
for the message that's about to be revealed. It is in your holy name of Jesus the Christ that we are here. Amen. Amen. Now for a word, right? Um, as I was uh, thinking and just trying to meditate and absorb the presence of God, I was asking him, you know, to calm my spirit, to calm my nerves and help me to deliver a message that will be impactful. Because believe it or not, I really don't like speaking in front of people. <laughs> and um, I'm really quite uncomfortable. But God is so good. He removes the anxiety. He removes the panic. And he allows his spirit to flow through me. And so for that, I am so grateful. Because as I said, I do get these anxiety attacks. And I really don't like being in front of folks. But before I deliver a message today, let us set the atmosphere because this month's theme is new season, kingdom explosion. So here we go. Dear God, our heavenly father, our provider, our life sustainer, and the one who loves us beyond anything that we could ever imagine, a love that is infinite, everlasting, and constant, we give you praise, worshiping you, just because of who you are, the great I am. This month, as we embark on this journey of kingdom explosion, we ask that during this season, you will explode in our lives so profoundly that all we encounter will be impacted in powerful ways. We love you, God, and in all things and in all ways, we give you glory in the amazingly awesome name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. All right, here we go. Before we can consider how Jesus impacts our relationships with others, we need to believe that he is who he says he is. In essence, we must believe that God is real, and we must believe that the word of God is true. There is a story about a little boy, probably in elementary school, as a lot of these little folks are. He was raised in a Christian environment. At times in school, he said things that demonstrated his faith. One day during recess, he and a classmate were talking. The Christian boy told his friend, I saw these really dope sneakers, and so I prayed to God for them. I've been praying for a long time now, and still, I don't have any sneakers. Then his friend said to him, see, man, I told you. There isn't any God. The Christian boy was silent for a few minutes or a few seconds, thinking about what his friend said, and then he responded, God's answer was no. So God is real. His answer, his answer although he said it was a no answer, but this little boy had such faith and belief regardless, because sometimes God's answers to our prayers are no. And sometimes the things that we request, they are things that we feel we need or are necessary, but God knows better than us. So he will tell us no. Sometimes he will say wait. And sometimes the wait may be days, weeks, months, years. We look at Sarah and Abraham, right? They waited years for a child. But God's timing is right. His answer, his responses to us are right. And they're good for us, although we don't always see it because we want what we want, right? But we have to rely on God and trust in him. But this fictitious story demonstrates an unshakable faith. And this is what God wants us to have. As this little boy Truly, I believe what God says. See, for I am more than a conqueror, more than just a survivor. In him, I not only live, but thrive. By his power, I am kept alive. I can accomplish what I set out to do. For, Lord, I have complete faith in you. Your word says that I am the head, not the tail. Within your, in, your, in my corner, I cannot fail. Yes, I believe what God says. 
In his word, I am given the truth. God said it, and that's my proof. I will always have everything I need, for I am my heavenly Father's seed. Nothing essential will God keep from me as long as I remain connected to thee. He is my strength when I am weak, keeping me calm when things look so sad and bleak. For sure, I believe what God says. I am of great value and worth. For me and you, he emptied, he emptied himself to dwell upon earth. Yes, I am beautiful and wonderfully made. This view of me, I can never be swayed. In God, I am confident, competent, and bold, affirmed through the word that God told. Truly, I believe what God says to you. Being grounded, rooted in God, we possess his indwelling spirit, a spirit that compels us to love others, regardless of ethnicity, social economic status, faith, tradition, or lack of. However, to form or establish healthy relationships with others, it is essential to have a relationship with God. God has to be our priority. He should be first in our lives, seeking him for guidance, instruction, understanding, and discernment. I pray for God's discernment to keep me on the right path, to keep me away from people that I know will harm me. In this morning's scripture, we have these two sisters, Martha and Mary. Martha welcomes Jesus into her home. And as the custom in those days, she prepares to make him comfortable. She is busy probably cleaning, setting the table, preparing the food. The scripture doesn't tell us whether Jesus was alone or if the 12 disciples came with him. If this were so, this would involve more work for Martha. She'd have more people to prepare for, quite a bit of work. Therefore, I am certain that she was frustrated, perhaps feeling overwhelmed, and all she could see was that her sister Mary was sitting there with Jesus, not offering to help. Then what probably angered Martha is that when she complained to Jesus, he didn't support her. He didn't have her back. Jesus didn't minimize Martha's efforts, but he recognized that Mary was doing a better thing demonstrating that her devotion, her love to God, must be the basis of our service for him. How often do we busy ourselves with things, but God isn't in it. Our heart for God isn't in it. So that's kind of like a, a vain, fruitless effort. God must undergird our work. This story shows the importance of relationships. Relationships have to be cultivated sincere, engaged, and intentional. Relationships are hard. Think about it. We have to constantly work at it. Relationships in our marriage, in school with our coworkers, and definitely our relationship with God. It takes work, it takes effort, but it's worth it if we're to have these healthy relationships. I truly believe that when we have a sincere and consistent relationship with God, he will enable us to impact the lives of others. He will help us to be kind, generous, one of the words the children were saying. He will also enable us to give people grace. Sometimes people do things to us, they hurt our feelings, they say something that disturbs us and we get bent out of shape, and we delete them from our lives. We're angry. We're constantly thinking about and talking about how they treated us. Where is the grace? Where is the forgiveness? Where is the attempt to understand what is really going on? Why did this person lash out at me? Why did these people do this to me? As God forgives us for all our transgressions, he gives us grace because we do things that are not pleasing. So why can't we extend that same grace, that same mercy, and continue to love those? And when if you're able, attending church, 
just being in the presence of other believers in God's house, worshiping God can be encouraging and will strengthen you even during challenging times. The Psalm 122 one says, I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. These words are the people exhorting, encouraging one another to go and worship God in his temple. Because it's not about us. It's all about God. We have a God that is more than worthy of our praise, our worship, our time. He is the one and only living God, the God of Abraham. That powerful voice from a burning bush spoke to Moses, I am that I am. This same God, Jehovah, is whatever we need, a smorgasbord of nourishment we can just sit down and feed. He satisfies physically and spiritually, totally, completely. He's deliverance from pain and a troubled soul. God's word is absolute assurance. Everything is in his control. He provides unending peace, abundant mercy, it's all God's to release. I am that I am. Mighty father of Abraham. See, God provides living water that you never thirst again. His shed blood forgave your every sin. And now you have life that will never end. For God is a genuine friend, truly the best. I've tried others but discovered he's better than the rest. God is this wonderful listener, so patient and kind. Before I even spoke, he knew all that was on my mind. He is the great I am, the amazing God of Abraham. See, he's salvation for your mind, your body, and soul. In him is completeness, everything we need to be whole. God is joy in the midst of deep sadness and pain with a love that will sustain, a love that will keep you sane, because I've been there. God is healing for every affliction. I'm telling you, he's the cure for every addiction. He's the answer for every problem when no one else can solve them, for he is, I am that I am, mighty God of Abraham. God is whatever you or I need him to be. Thank you, Lord. This, this is why he means everything to me. Whenever I'm in need, God's there. All of my worries to bear. Whenever I'm lonely, feeling miserable and blue, he's my sunshine in the middle of a storm, just bursting through. God is, I am that I am, father of Abraham. Just call on him and you'll see. God is whoever he wants to be. That's why I love him. When I consider and really think about this idea of a new season, kingdom, explosion, I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I'm invigorated because I anticipate God doing a new and amazing thing in this season. I sense a spirit of more love, forgiveness, acceptance, and peace. Although the world is saying otherwise, I will not be disturbed, shaken, or worried because God tells me in 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. As Pastor Dave said last Sunday, and I'm trying to keep this in mind as I go through things, keep your eyes, keep your focus on God. He created a whole world. So you think he can't handle our issues? <laughs> but we got to stay focused on him. This season, this is one of my goals, to stay more focused on him. Keep my mind on him, and I'm expecting a kingdom explosion. So church, I encourage all of us to be intentional, purposeful, and in establishing, building a secure relationship with God. And watch what God does. As scripture states in Matthew 6, 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. But what is this scripture really telling us? Some people interpret this scripture to mean that God will give them a lot of material blessings, money, <laughs> trips, you know, 
a great husband, a great spouse. But he may do that. But no, this God is saying that he will supply all of our basic needs. Shelter, food, clothing, peace of mind. And to be with us as we endure and go through trials and tribulations and challenges. Yet the key to blessings from God is a sincere effort to put him first. And I don't always do that. And living a life according to his standards, his expectations of us. I don't like saying the words laws. Because in the word it does say that God will raise up a standard, right? There are things that he expects of us. Things that he, he has um, standards for us. We can't just do what we want to do because our God is holy and he wants us to be that way too. In essence, God is all about relationship. He continuously pursues us. He woos us. Wow, what love, right? He keeps chasing me and I keep running sometimes because I don't always want to say yes to things. Our God is so good wanting a sincere, loving relationship with us. In our relationship with God, it's a contagious phenomenon erupting within us that impacts others in powerful ways. In closing, I want to encourage us to stay connected to God, remembering as the family of God, we are truly one body in Christ. Although we are many, but one body in Christ, to serve humankind through God, his grace is suffice. We are to share our grace-giving gifts to help one another that all feel connected as sister and brother. Each gift is to be utilized for God's glory, not so we can boast. As we evangelize telling the good news story of the risen Savior who died for all our evil deeds, but because of his mercy, he tends to our needs. Yet we are one body united in Jesus to enjoy eternal life because he loves us. When one is hurting or agonized with despair, we are to empathize and respond with care. When one hurts, we should all hurt. See, we are many, we may be, but in our Lord, we are one. Our lives are woven together for God's purpose to be done. As the people of God, united and strong, we stand to spread the gospel of Jesus throughout this land. As we are undefeatable as one in Christ, simply unbeatable, for the will of Christ is that we love as he, that we might live together in peace and, yes, unity. Although many but one body in Christ, we're, ser we're to serve humankind through his grace so suffice. I wonder sometimes if I'm doing that, because I'm not a perfect human being either. I have my flaws. There are some folks that touch my last nerves. It takes everything in me not to say words that are not nice, <laughs> but the God in me keeps me in check, so I thank him for that. Let us pray. Our amazingly awesome God, we give you thanks for enabling us to see this new season. We worship and adore you, God, asking that you will ignite a fire in us to serve better, to love better. We ask, dear God, that you continue to work in us, correct us when we are out of order, guide us, directing us to seek you first and love as you love. In the blessed name of Jesus the Christ, we lift up all things to you. Amen. Amen. Be blessed. Amen. Amen. We'll have the band come forward. And now is an opportunity because of the impact that God has on you or Jesus has on you, where are you being called to give back in your prayers, your witness, your service, your gifts. And so we'll have the ushers come forward. And here's an opportunity to give back in your prayers, your presence, your witness, your service, and your gifts.
Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this opportunity to give, to share a small portion of your abundance that you have given to us. We ask God that you bless those who gave this morning, but to also bless those who did not have the means to give, but the heart to give. We also ask God that you increase, enhance this offering, that it will impact the kingdom, God, right here at St. Andrews as we reach out to others in the community and beyond. And in the precious name of Jesus the Christ, we say amen. God has given us unlimited grace, and Jesus saved us from our sins. We thank you, Lord, and praise you for all you have done till the day we return to your glorious house. <laughs> Now we have heard the word of God. We know this is a new season. And as I said, I anticipate great things. I can't wait to see what God is going to do in this new season. So I am encouraging you to go out into the world with this kingdom explosion mindset and impact the lives of others. Because that's what it's all about, reaching out to others, loving them with the love of Christ. So be blessed as you do this. Amen. 